Hello and welcome to this course on gRPC. My name is Stefan Marek and I'll be your instructor for this class. So first, the course introduction and I want to introduce you specifically to gRPC. So today's trend is to build microservices and you've heard that before. And microservices, they're built in different languages and they will encompass a function of your business. For example, we have a buy service where user purchase stuff, right? It may be connected to another microservice written in another language called a promotion service, okay? Maybe you'll sell something for $100, but the promotion service says, no, actually it's on promotion, it's $80. So the buy microservice and the promotion microservice are connected. Maybe there's also a delivery service uh, microservice that's connected to your buy service, okay? Because after a user buys something, it needs to be delivered, that good. And also maybe you have a user microservice that happens to be connected to the delivery, the buy, and the promotion microservice. So all in all, you get a bunch of microservices in a bunch of different languages, and they have to talk to one another. Now, these microservices, when they exchange information, they need to agree on a lot of things. They need to agree on the API to exchange data, on the data formats, on the error patterns, on load balancing, and on many other stuff. One of the very popular choices for building API, and you've probably heard of it if you're in this course, is REST or HTTP JSON, okay, as a, as a broader mechanism. So in this course, though, we won't see REST. Obviously, we will explore gRPC, and there's a whole section on why gRPC versus REST. So building an API, I want you to say it's really hard, and you've probably experienced this. It's not fun. You need to think about the data model. Do I want JSON? Do I want XML? Or do I want something binary? You also need to think about the endpoints. Uh, for example, when you design a REST API, an endpoint looks like this. Get API v1 user 123 post 456. That's quite complicated. And then another post. So this is another verb, API v1 user 123 post. So that's quite complicated as well. You also need to think about how to invoke it and how to handle errors, the APIs and the errors. So it's really, really tough. You need to think about the efficiency of your API. How much data do I get out of one call? Is it too much data? Is it too little data? In which case I'm placed too many API calls. So you need to find the right balance. How about latency? How about scalability to 1000 clients? You know, How about load balancing? And how about interoperability between many languages? So don't run away. I don't want to overload you with concepts. I just want to show you that building an API is complicated. And finally, we can add authentication, monitoring, and logging. Ah, so much stuff to do, right? Don't you wish there was some framework that solved all the boring and hard stuff and only leaves you the fun stuff? Well, yes, that framework is gRPC. So what's an API at its core? At its core, an API is a contract saying, send me this request and I'll send this response. Easy, right? That's what an API should be. It's all about the data and nothing else. In the rest of this course, will relieve everything else that we saw before the hard stuff to the gRPC framework. So what's gRPC? What is this thing that solves all our problems? Well, gRPC is free and open source framework developed by Google and with Square and other companies. And gRPC is now part of the Cloud Native Foundation, uh, Computation Foundation, CNCF, just the way Docker and Kubernetes, for example, are also part of this project. So gRPC is quite an important project nowadays. At a high level, gRPC allows us to define requests and responses for RPC calls, so remote procedure calls, and handles everything for you. On top of it, wait for it, a lot of buzzwords, it's modern, fast and efficient, built on top of HTTP2, low latency, it'll support streaming, it'll be language independent, and it makes it super easy to plug in authentication, load balancing, logging, and monitoring. So, sounds awesome, sounds like a perfect framework, and it's a really good one. So what's an RPC, by the way? What have you been mentioning RPC? RPC, as I said, is a remote procedure call. In your client code, basically, it looks, it will look like we're calling a function directly on the server. So here's our server code. Uh, think of any language, right? We'll create users. So there's a function called create users, create user. And then in the client code, any other language, we'll have our code and we'll say user. So as you can see in yellow, the create user is matching. So it looks like on the client code, we're directly invoking a function on the server. And that's what's called an RPC call. So RPC is not like we're invoking a function on a server. There is something that happens over the network, but that's what it looks like in our code. And that's what makes RPC awesome. So is RPC a new concept though? No, it's not. It's not a new concept. 
There were other frameworks and languages such as Corba that had this before. But with gRPC, it's much nicer to deal with, it's implemented very cleanly, and it solves a lot of problems that the frameworks from many, many years ago had. So here's an image you'll see a lot when you look at gRPC. It's from the gRPC.io website. And we can see that, for example, we have a C++ service on the left-hand side, and we have a Ruby client and an Android Java client all talking to our RPC server using protocol request and response. So basically, it's the same concept as I told before, we have generated code and we can place RPC requests. So how do I get started? Because right now I'm just selling you a dream, right? At the core of it, we'll need to define the messages and the services using protocol buffers. The rest of the gRPC code will be generated for us and we'll just have to implement our service. So gRPC will solve a lot of problems for us and generate a ton of code. Overall, when we write one dot proto file, that will work for us for over 12 programming languages, server and client, and allow us to use a framework that scales to a million of RPC per second. So here's what we'll do in this course. And this is just a great service. So if you follow my protocol buffer course, you'll really understand what this is. Basically, we have our message, greeting, then we send, a, we define a greet request, a greet response, and at the very bottom, we have our service greet service, which define an RPC greet, which takes a greet request and returns a greet response. So that's our API contract, which just defined the greet RPC right here. So we'll go much in depth over what this is, how it works, and really how things are defined, but I want you to have a sneak peek of how to define an RPC service in protocol buffers. So why do we even use protocol buffers in this course? Well, protocol buffers, they're basically language agnostic. The code can be generated for pretty much any language. The data is binary and efficiently serialized, and we'll see this in this course. The, it's very, very convenient when you want to transport a lot of data, so in big data setups. It also allows for you to easily evolve your API using some rules. So overall, before starting this course, you should know the basics of protocol buffers Otherwise, you're going to be completely lost, okay? So, hope you have that in your baggage. Let's get going. So, this is a pretty lengthy introduction, right? But why should you learn protocol buffers and gRPC? Well, many companies have embraced it entirely in production. We're talking about Google for their internal service and external service like PubSub. We're talking about Netflix, Square, which is one of the first contributors, CoreOS, which built etcd3 on top of it, CockroachDB, and so on. In my opinion, gRPC is the future of microservices API and mobile to server APIs, and maybe even web APIs, okay? All in all, it's an amazing framework to, re to learn. I would just wanted to give you a taste and an introduction over you know, what it solves, what problems it solves, how it's revolutionary, who uses it, and how it's built. Don't worry, it may be overwhelming right now, but in this course, we will go step by step to learn gRPC and do it correctly. So I hope you're excited and I will see you in the next lecture.